This is a special episode for me because as you can see, we're at Notre Dame Stadium and we are gonna be talking to the head coach, Marcus Freeman. It's one of the biggest programs in all of college football and we're gonna be talking to him about leadership and how in many ways he is the CEO of their program. Let's go talk to Marcus. So we are with the head coach of Notre Dame football, Marcus Freeman. Marcus, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Absolutely, glad to be here. Man. Yeah. So obviously you are not a CEO in your title, but in many ways your role is very similar to a CEO. Can you tell us what some of those similarities are? Well, I think you're, the overarching theme is that we are the face and in charge of a, a, a big company, right? Our, my company happens to be Notre Dame football. But you know, at the end of the day, you're responsible for every decision. You're responsible for um, the people that are a part of your uh, football program for me and, and the results that are on the field. And so, you know, you don't make every decision, but you're responsible for every decision. And uh, that's important to make sure you understand. So how has your role changed? You started as uh, in coaching as a GA, then position coach, then coordinator. Can you explain how your role has evolved as your time has gone on and then ultimately where you ended up here? Yeah, I think they all come back to the same thing, right? Is And that is serving, serving your players, serving your staff, um, serving those around you. But, you know, the responsibilities are different. And then quickly you learn that for me, the greatest satisfaction came out of seeing the players you were involved with have success. And your job is to make sure the product on the field is is one that, that produces wins. And so... The responsibilities change, but why you do it and what I enjoy mostly about it um, has it, and that's still serving the players and now he's serving your staff. Stays the same. Mm -hmm. So could you give us like an overview of the breakdown of time spent, say on staff, on recruiting, on the player development, on game plan? Do you have like a percentage breakdown that you could walk us through? <laughs> um, Rough outline of it. You know, I would say at least, I would hope the greater percentage of what I do is spent with being around the players, right? And, and that doesn't always mean coaching, but the majority of time, 51%, is is still being around your players. The next percentage would be recruiting, all right? Is that recruiting is an everyday thing, mm -hmm. right? Between calling a, a player, getting them on FaceTime, recruiting is a huge por portion of what we do. And then another, the next big portion is the staff, like spending time with your staff in a staff meeting, when they're in, in position meetings, but being a part of your staff, what about when you were first hired? That that moment kind of went viral. Uh, you were originally the defensive coordinator, and then all of a sudden, 48 hours later, you're the head coach of Notre Dame. How did that make you feel walking into that room or this room over here and everyone just erupted immediately? You knew that your internal stakeholders are very excited about you leading them. So how'd that make you feel? It was a blur, but I remember walking out of that door and all I wanted to do was hug them. Right, and, and it wasn't about a speech, it wasn't about what you're gonna say, it's about a chance to celebrate and be with your guys, right? And, and I tell them all the time, I'm a teammate, and I might be the captain, but I'm a teammate. I understand the things you're going through. I'm in this fight with you. And I think they, they respect that and they understand that. And I think that video is a reflection of that. It's about a bunch of players that see this coach that they love, hey, they trust him. I'm in this fight with you. This isn't a head coach and a bunch of players. This is a team that's together. And uh, it's a moment I'll never forget and one I'll cherish forever. You used to say, choose hard. I don't know if you still oh, do. Yeah. You oh, do? Yeah. Can you explain what choose hard is? Well, it all started when uh, a couple years ago, I was in the Notre Dame weight room and, and I'm working out as, as our players are working out and they're being pushed, they're being pushed hard. and, and I remember saying like, you can choose to go through the motions or you can choose to go as hard as you can. And that's when I came with this thought, choose hard. Like, you got options. Mm -hmm. You can coast through it or you can choose the hard way. So I remember telling Ron Paulus, who's our associate AD for football, I said, I want to sign when you walk into this building that says choose hard. Because when you walk into Notre Dame football, you got to have that mindset. We're going to choose hard today in practice, choose hard today in meetings, choose hard today in the weight room. But we kind of expanded that to that's what Notre Dame's about. You're going to be challenged in the classroom, right? You're going to go, you're going to, as a football player, be in class with some of the most intelligent people in this world. And it's difficult. Yeah. And ultimately, you're telling them you want this. Amen. Long term. You Amen. want this. And so you got to choose it, right? Because there's going to be easier options 
outside of the University of Notre Dame. There are, but you've chosen to come here, so choose hard, accept it, and know the rewards from choosing hard every single day are something that can't be reciprocated anywhere else. And so I want them to embrace it. Notre Dame is hard. The Notre Dame football program is gonna be hard. Choose it, choose it, and it's gonna make your life better because of it. What is a lesson you've learned now in year three that was difficult to learn in these first two years? <laughs> you know, I think the biggest lesson is that at times you're gonna fail. You're gonna lose. That can be losing a recruit. That can be losing um, a coach, a staff member, and that can be ultimately losing a game. And um, that's a part of life. That's a part of coaching. You know, I remember uh, my very first game, uh, the first game was a bowl game uh, of 2021. And again, that one, I didn't know where to go, where to stand, what to do. I was still figuring this thing out. Mm -hmm. And so I really count my first game being uh, at Ohio State. And I knew that was a big challenge, right? That was a challenge and, and we were gonna have to play extremely well to compete with them and, and try to beat them. And, and we ultimately did it. But the next week, it was guaranteed. Like, well, it's gonna get, I'm gonna get my first win. And uh, it was against Marshall and we lost that game. And I remember going to my office and saying, okay, I have to figure this thing out. We have a good football team. We should not have lost that game. What are the issues and how do I fix them? Right, a lot of people say, trust the process. Mm -hmm. my, I'm, my mantra is fix the process. And so I spend a lot of time of, evaluating everything we were doing. Why aren't we playing better? What are we doing schematically? What are our players don't understand? And, and the next week we came out and we won. And, and you know, again, it isn't like I, I figured out the perfect solution because we still lost another two games that year. But the biggest lesson I learned is that, that losses happen and it's a part of life, it's a part of leadership. But one, don't have too many of them or you won't be in this position, mm -hmm. but two, fix it with urgency. Speaking of the pressures of head coach, how does that make you feel, uh, just being the head coach when those losses do happen? You mentioned the Marshall game. You know, how did that make you feel? Uh, you you have a family. Sports is a pretty brutal business sometimes, yeah. and you could get pushed off somewhere if you don't perform. I mean, yeah. it's literally about wins and losses. Yeah, that's the reality of, of the profession that I'm in and many others are in. Um, but the pressure I put on myself to to make sure I give these young people a chance to succeed on Saturdays is is as high as, as there is, right? It, it's not because of if we don't win, I'm gonna be fired. It's that these guys choose Notre Dame to win a national champion. These guys choose Notre Dame to play at the highest level. Losses are never fun and they're never easy and every single one hurts. Um, and again, as I said earlier, losses on the field, losses in your staff, losses in recruiting, they all hurt, but time heals everything, right? And so you can't dwell on it. You have to figure out a better way to do it and then run as fast as you can towards that. And so I know there's pressure. I know there's there's opinions, um, but I, I, I put as much pressure on myself to give these guys a, a great chance to be successful on Saturday. How do you keep players engaged uh, while you're recruiting, while there's transfers coming in? What's, what's the best way for you to keep players engaged and also keep attracting new talent? Yeah, you know what I think about when you ask that question is, okay, if I'm a CEO of a company, you gotta pay your employees, right? If they're gonna go somewhere else and make a lot more money, no matter what type of mm -hmm. company you're running, they're gonna probably leave. And so we have to make sure that our players can maximize the opportunities of name, image, and likeness here. And so that's that's important, and we do that. But two, after that, what else keeps them at Notre Dame? What else attracts them here? And, and you gotta believe it's your culture. It's, you gotta believe the way they're treated. Um, do they enjoy uh, being part of your program? And that's important to me is that, hey, yes, they're gonna maximize their name, image, and likeness here, but they're gonna enjoy being a part of this football program. And that's so important, and that's, that's a message from myself, but also our other coaches that, that are around these players. Let's make sure as hard as we push them, as demanding we are, we don't have to be demeaning. We want them to enjoy being a part of this university, this football program, and all the opportunities that Notre Dame football, but the University of Notre Dame provides. Do you think the NCAA should try to rectify some of its past moves? I mean, Reggie Bush doesn't have a Heisman still, and Jim, I mean, your former coach, uh, Jim Tressel, over autographs for tattoos. <laughs> I mean, think about that now compared to now I see someone in a national commercial and he's a star player. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, is, do you think that would help in the future if the NCAA started to realize that there's some hypocrisy there? I think it's really difficult to go back and say, well, the rules are different now, so let's rectify the things that happened back then. The rules are rules, right? And I would mm -hmm. see 
in a couple of years from now, rules will continue to change, right? And I don't think we can go back and say, well, now that the rules are changed, we're gonna punish you for things that you were allowed to do back in 2024, 23. And so it's our job to make sure within the ever changing rules changes that we follow them, stay within them, but also make sure we maximize our program underneath these rules that are implemented. Obviously your goal is to win a national championship. I'm rooting so hard for that to happen. I'm so pumped when it does happen. What is your mark on Notre Dame though? There's a lot of great history here. There's been a lot of great coaches. What's Marcus Freeman at Notre Dame? You know, I, at the end of the day, I just want to be a coach that, that is remembered for loving this place, but also loving his players. What this university offers young people is something that uh, isn't offered at many other places, you know, and, and nowhere else I've been a part of. And so that's what makes this place special. But two, um, what makes Notre Dame football special is the players. That's what I want to be remembered as a guy that loved his players, tried to do everything in his power to influence and lead and, and set his young people up for success. If you could choose any leader to have like a meal with, who would it be? Ooh. Maybe Barack Obama. Nice. Uh, obviously, I couldn't imagine being the president of the United States, but then being the first black president of the United States, right? And, and I just want to know, like, what is it like, the decisions you have to make, the pressure you have? Uh, that would be somebody I would love to just sit down and have a conversation with. What's your last meal on earth? Oh, last meal, huh? <laughs> I would probably do something Korean. You know, my okay. mom's Korean and, and you know, I get American food every day. You know, my wife's Italian, I get Italian food, but if it's my last meal, I tell my mom, hey, cook me a, a Korean meal. If you could choose any profession, you can't be in sports and you can't be the head coach of Notre Dame anymore, what would you be? No, has nothing to do with money, right? Nothing. I would be a firefighter. I've always said that. Nice. And here's what I think why is because I love the team aspect. I love the challenge, right? I love to, the, to go out and solve a problem, to put out a fire or something like that, but I love the team element of it. Nice, mm -hmm. I like that. If you could teleport anywhere in the world with your family, like a nice vacation, two, two weeks, go anywhere you want. Hawaii, that's, that's our spot. You nice. know, we, we went there for uh, our honeymoon, me and my wife, and then we took the kids there this summer uh, for a little vacation, but either that or, or somewhere in Italy. My wife's Italian, she's been to Italy multiple times, but I've never been there, and so. Uh, oh, you gotta go, I'm Italian, yeah, 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 there you go. I, yeah. I would like to, to go somewhere in Italy, maybe Rome or something. Well, I say this usually at the end of each interview when we're sitting down, when I learn about the person and the product, like I'm cheering for you, I like your business. But this one, I'm like, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm really cheering for it and I hope we get a national championship. Yeah. So Marcus, really appreciate yeah, it. You're awesome. awesome. Yeah, keep Thank it going. You. Thanks for having me, cool. it's been fun. So many touchdowns here that I've scored. It's the first time I've been on the field. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm ready to go through a freaking wall right now. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. You got some years left of eligibility, right? <laughs> I think so. I think I have won. <laughs> it was a hard reality for me not to go to the NFL. It's all right. Damn. Look at you now, huh? <laughs> Damn it. God, it just was. It was tough. And about, yeah. What do you guys think? Too much. I was about to say I still got it. I don't know if I do. I thought this one would be easier. It's not. <laughs>